Hi, I'm Michael Ryaboy and I'm a developer advocate for KDB AI. And in this video, I'll show you how you can make a custom GPT that uses semantic search on the backend. So this example app, Domains GPT, is going to take a user query and it's going to format it in a way that it could interact with our backend that fetches brandable domains and display it to the user. So for example, if the user is looking for an, a domain name for their next generation dating app, our GPT can talk to our backend and then fetch some results. And there are several advantages to this kind of interface. One, users are already used to ChatGPT, so they might already be using it. And the second is that ChatGPT is a list aware we ranker. And that means it could take your top few results and then figuring out, figure out based on a prior conversation and based on how these results relate to each other, which ones are truly the most relevant to the user. So here are some results uh, and we can look closer and find that this is the query that our uh, GPT made. So uh, with semantic search, it doesn't really matter what the user searches. Our GPT is going to be smart enough to make the proper query to find some relevant domain names. Now let's look at how we could build this in practice. Now here, we have a Colab notebook with some dependencies. Now the only libraries we need here are Voyage AI and KDB AI client. I've already scraped Brandpa. Brandpa is a search engine for brandable domains and scraped around 18 to 19,000 domain names. So I'm going to skip this step and I'm going to go straight to checking the number of domain names that I have, importing the necessary libraries and formatting our domains with for retrieval. Now don't worry too much about why we're adding this additional information to our domains. This is just something I'm doing to slightly improve retrieval performance with Voyage AI embeddings. Now next, we need our credentials. Now for our KDBI endpoint and API key, we could get those by going to KDB AI and clicking sign up and then once we get to our cloud console, they'll be available. And for our Voyage API key, it's similar. We're just gonna go to voyageai.com, uh, voyageai.com, and we're gonna click try now. Now, I already have my API key set. So next, we are gonna generate some embeddings. Now, I've already generated all these embeddings, so I'm going to skip this step, and I'm going to check the length of the embeddings, and I'm going to connect to my KDB AI session. Next, just to make sure that there's no table called domains that exists, I'm going to run this cell. And finally, I'm ready to create my schema. Now my schema is going to have a domain, an image URL, and a price as columns. But the most important column is the vectors column, which is going to be in a vector index with 1024 dimensions, which is equal to the number of dimensions uh, that our embedding model outputs. Its similarity metric will be CS or cosine similarity. And in this case, the similarity metric doesn't matter too much for performance. And our index type is going to be HNSW. And this is to slightly speed up our searches. Although in practice with 18,000 vectors, this doesn't make too much of a difference. Next, we are going to create our table. And we're going to format our data. Now our data is going to be formatted in a data frame and I am formatting the image URLs to be correct, and I'm formatting the price to be uh, an integer because that's uh, the nature of 
our price in our schema. And let's check our data frame. And we see that we have a price, we have vectors, we have image URL. And we are ready to start inserting our data into our table. Now we won't be able to insert all our data at once because we'll run out of memory. So we're gonna insert our data in batches. Now next let's move on to our replet. Now our backend is gonna be built on replet just because it's very easy to work with GPTs and Replit together. And the reason for this is that when you run a Replit, you actually get an instant endpoint that you could use. So this is a dev URL and it's temporary. And if you stop or leave this uh, tab, it'll eventually stop working, but it's good enough for now. And if you actually want to use Replit in production, you absolutely can. You can pay $20 and deploy it and run it and use it as your backend. Replit is actually what I'm using not only for the backend of this domain GPT that I showed you earlier, but also for a full stack application based on it, which is domainloom.com. So it's a really cool tool, but how does our backend actually work? We need a few credentials. We need once again our KDBI uh, API key and endpoint. We need our Voyage API key as well. And one more thing that we need is our Cohere API key. And our Cohere API key will be used to re-rank our results to get a little bit of extra accuracy. Now, suggesting a relevant domain name is very challenging. If we use regular similarity search, no matter what embedding model we use, we'll see that our accuracy won't be very high. And that's what re-ranking does. It takes our initial semantic search results and improves on them further. The drawback to this is that the latency is going to be a little higher. But since most of our latency is going to come from the actual chat GPT generation, this doesn't matter that much in practice. To set your API secrets, you go to this secrets tab right here and you can set your specific uh, API credentials. Now I already have them set and I'm ready to define this generate domain names endpoint. Now this endpoint is very simple. We take a company description, we embed it with a little extra information which is here, represent a company description for relevant domain name retrieval. And this is something that's specific to the Voyage Large 2 Instruct model to improve performance. And then we could search and get the top 500 vectors. We're using the aggregation function to only fetch the image URL domain and price and not the vector embeddings. And then we're doing some formatting. And then finally, we re-rank and return the result. Very simple. We also have this additional endpoint for privacy and open API spec, although this open API spec endpoint isn't strictly necessary. Our privacy file is right here. It's just a general privacy file that I created with ChatGPT. And this is our entire backend. Now that we are done with our backend, we can create our GPT. The first step to create a GPT is to go to the GPT tab and click create. And then we're going to name our GPT domain GPT. And we're going to add a description here. That's not too important. We could say return a list of relevant uh, domain names based on a startup description. And then we can use the same description for the instructions for now. And the important part is to create a new action. Now to create a new action, we can get a little bit of help from action GPT and we can go to our code and we can just copy all of our code here and also copy our endpoint URL. And then we could talk to action GPT and say here, is our endpoint URL and here is our code, which is just going to be this. And we could say something along the lines of 
write an open API spec based on the above. And this open API spec is how our GPT is going to interact with our backend. It has a description of all the endpoints that we have. We have one main endpoint, generate domain names. It has criteria for the request body, all the information that it needs to interact with this API in a robust way. So here we could just take this and paste it into this schema text area. And it recognized correctly that we have this generate domain names endpoint. And now we are ready to test it. We could say, give me some domain names for a clean biotech startup. And what it's going to do is going to interact with our API. It's going to create an action. And then it's going to return me a list of domains. And then we could do the same exact query and say that we want images as well. And we could say that it's working with glass. And now it's going to search for something that's going to include glass. It's going to interact with our API. And let's say, please give images just to make sure that it understands that I really want images. And that's exactly what it's getting. So the reason it's able to do this is because it's making a request. It's getting this response and then it's processing it. Now there are different optimizations that we can make here. For example, for the directions in our open API spec, we could say that it should re-rank based on its own criteria. And then it'll be able to re-rank it. Uh, the results a little better instead of returning the exact same results as our API returns. But in general, this is a really great demonstration of how easy it is to create a custom GPT with your own data. Now, if you want to publish this GPT, you're going to have to add a privacy policy. So here we have an endpoint with privacy policy. So we could just add it. And then we are ready to create our GPT. We could add it to the GPT store. You could use it only for yourself. You could share it with anyone with a link. And we're done. I really hope this was helpful and I'm really excited to see what you're able to build uh, with this combination of vector similarity search and custom GPTs that are able to understand user intent.